Keep this on low. This on high. There you go. One, two, three. We're perfect. One, two, three. Matthew chapter 17. Please uh, take some notes and write down these scriptures tonight. I'm going to do something tonight that will help you as an individual and that will really help our church. It's, a lot of this is because of youth rally coming up, but we need it anyway. Youth rally or no youth rally, we need to know what the Bible says about fasting. Amen? And this is for you. This is for every Christian. This is not just for a select few fanatics that can torture themselves. This is for every Christian. Every Christian are to learn to fast. To fast. And don't give me this baloney about you can't do it. You won't do it. That's your problem. And we'll, we'll see what the Bible says here tonight in the Word of God. Matthew 17, verse 21. Howbeit this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Not just prayer, prayer and fasting. The word fasting is left out in the New International Version, the New Bibles. Amen. Don't have it in it. Neither does it have it in Acts 10. Neither does it have it over in the book of Corinthians. They leave out the word fasting. Wonder why. Jesus said, there's some things that can't happen unless people fast. There's some things that won't happen unless people fast. Preachers, you better get this. If you don't get anything else, get this. If you don't know all your doctrine, get this. There's some things that won't happen in your life unless you learn how to fast. The hardest thing in the Christian life to do is pray and fast. It's, I can preach on the street a lot easier than I can fast. I preached on the street in the middle of Chicago the other day, right downtown Chicago. We all went downtown and we was going to the, see that, the world's tallest building, uh, the Sears Tower. And we was going to go, you can go up in the elevator and look all over miles and miles around. And we said, said boys, we're going to preach. And I said, we don't need to pass up an opportunity like this. So we just knelt down there and prayed thousands and tens of thousands of people and just preached. That's hard, but it ain't as hard as fasting. It ain't as hard as fasting. Giving a testimony. Reading your Bible. You say, I just can't make myself read my Bible. Well, you're a long way from where you ought to be on this tonight. Our God in this generation is our belly. In Christianity today, their God is their belly. Fasting is not a hunger strike to protest and get something from God. Fasting is a chastening and a humbling of the soul that God may have mercy on us. Over 80 references in the Bible to fasting. Our generation, we live to eat. As soon as we get breakfast over with, we start wondering what we're going to have for dinner. As soon as we get dinner over with, we start planning how we're going to enjoy supper and then snack. Have you ever thought about this? The first sin ever committed on this earth was eating and led to all the other ones. It shows dedication, sacrifice, and self-denial. Psalm 35, 13, you can write this down. I'll, I'll tell you when I want you to turn to one. Write this one down. Psalm 35, 13, David said, I humble my soul with fasting. Now, if the Lord told you to humble yourself tonight, He said, humble yourselves therefore into the mighty hand of God, right? How would you humble yourself? You say, well, the Lord said humble yourself. How do you do it? Could you write down me one thing that will humble you? You can't, can you? You know what the Bible says it will humble you? Fasting. Fasting. I humble my soul with fasting. Psalm 69, 10. Write it down. I chasten my soul with fasting. Fasting is when you say, all right, old, old Danny, you're not going to get nothing to eat today. You're going to do without and humble my soul and chasten my soul before God. Now, in the Bible tonight, there are three types of fast. Write these down. Number one, there is a supernatural fast. That means God intervenes and gives people supernatural ability to fast. Example, Moses. Here in the Word of God, you say Moses fasted 40 days and 40 nights. That's absolutely right. He went up on the mountain. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights. He went up there. He had nothing to eat. 
He got the Ten Commandments from God. But here's what a lot of people don't realize. When Moses came down, saw him worshiping the golden calves, he threw the commandments down and busted them, turned right around, walked right back on top of that mountain and went another 40 days. That's 80 days. That's supernatural. There's no way a man can do that in his own power. That had to be an act of God sustaining him to be alive. Uh, then uh, the second kind of fast in the Bible is a absolute fast. Number one, there's a supernatural fast. Number two, there's an absolute fast. And what an absolute fast is, is no food, no water, nothing coming into your mouth. Nothing for a period of time. You find this in Esther chapter 4, where in verse 16, where she was going to intervene for her people. She went into the king and said, if I perish, I perish. And she said, got the people there. She did eat nothing. She did drink nothing that God might protect her. Listen to me tonight, church. This, this has been heavy on my heart. This is what we need to do. This is where our church is tonight. And listen, an absolute fast is no food, no water. Those are for spiritual emergencies. I mean, when a crisis hits and you absolutely have to have divine intervention, no food, no water. There are only one day or, or two days most of the time in the Bible. Uh, Acts chapter 9 and so forth and so on. We see it in the Word of God. Now, absolute fact. They say, medically speaking, that a person cannot live over 12 days with no food or water. Laying down in a cool room, laying down, you live 12 days. So an absolute fast in the Bible is normally uh, just for a day or so forth and so on. Then number three, there's the partial fast. A part, what is a partial fast? Partial fast in the Bible is no food, no nourishment coming into your mouth at all, just water. That's all it was. You say, what about juice? I know we, we people believe different on that and everything, but in the Bible, it was just water. Just water. No juice, no coffee, no, no uh, nourishment of any kind. A partial, in the Bible now, in the Bible I'm saying, just water. He did eat nothing and just drank water. We see those all the way through the Bible. Hannah over there in the Old Testament. Daniel, 21 days in the book of Daniel. Uh, Elijah, 40 days, unless it was a supernatural fast in his case. We see the most common fast in the Bible are one day. Do you hear me? Common fast in the Bible are one day. There is a three-day fast in the Bible. There is a seven-day fast in the Bible. There's a 14-day fast in the Bible. There's a 21-day fast in the Bible. And there's a 40-day fast in the Bible. But let me tell you something. Did you know there is only one seven-day fast in the Bible? Only one. And only one 14-day fast in the Bible? Acts chapter 11, over there on the ship, when they were there. And then the 21-day fast, only one. Daniel... There, the most common fast in the Bible are one in three days. I say that because of this. The devil will tell you, well, because you're not fasting seven days or because you're not fasting that the Lord won't hear you. The most important fast in the Bible were one-day fast. You know why? You know why a one or a two or a three-day fast gets more done in the Bible than nearly anything? Because that's when all the hunger pains are. They, all the hunger pains leave after the third day. I mean, you get on that second day, you're hungry. And on that third day, you're hungry. But they say the longer you go after that, that it's fine. after that, it's just nourishment and clearing out your mind and clearing out your soul and getting close to God and having fellowship with the Lord. Now, your stomach will tell you, it will scream and holler and say, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. I'm different, it's not me, there's something wrong with me, I can't do it. But don't you listen to your stomach unless you have a physical ailment, unless you have something fit. You have been diagnosed as a diabetic, you have to have insulin or you have to have on a certain diet, and even then you can fast a little bit. There is no excuse for a child of God someday, sometime getting up, pushing the plate back and saying, no, I want God's power to move in my life. Turn your Bible to Isaiah 58. Isaiah chapter 58. Let's look and see what this Scripture says. Now, I'm not going to ask you to turn to all of these. I ask you to write the rest of them down. Turn with me here. Isaiah chapter number 58. 
Isaiah chapter 58. Look at here. We can learn a lot about fasting here in this Scripture. Verse number 3. Isaiah 58, 3. Look at verse number 3. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not. They say, Lord, we fasted and it didn't do no good. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul and thou takest no knowledge? And he answers, Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure. See that? And exact all your labor. Stop there just a second. You know what's wrong with our fast many times? When we're fasting, we find pleasure. The whole idea about fasting is to deny the flesh. And if I deny the flesh, but yet sit and watch a ball game all evening, then my fasting is doing no good. Amen? I'm finding pleasure in the day of my fast. That's why the Bible said in 1 Corinthians 7, y'all with me tonight? That's why the Bible said in 1 Corinthians 7 that for a husband and wife even to abstain from the physical pleasures of marriage for a certain time that they may give themselves to fasting. There's something there. There's something from abstaining from anything pleasurable while you are fasting that God's power may rest upon you. That's why their fasting didn't do any good. Now, notice, look at verse number 4. He said, Behold, you fast for strife and do you're not sincere. Your motives ain't right. And to smite with a fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. He said, it's not going to do you no good. Verse 5. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? Now, here's the kind of fast the Lord wants. A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bull rush? And to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast an acceptable day on the Lord? Verse 6. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? Now, here's what fasting will do in your life. I'm going to go over this again in a few minutes, but I want everybody to look at verse 6. Here's what fasting will do in your life. To loose the bands of wickedness. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, you can get wickedness loosed on you by, by fasting that you can't get no other way. Are you having a hard time controlling your thoughts? Has lust got in your heart and you can't get it out? Have, are you having unclean desires? Are you being tempted? I'll tell you what to do. Starve that flesh and tell it no and you'll loose the bands of wickedness. Listen, you can loose the bands of wickedness even when a service is going on. When people pray and fast, the power of God invades services at church and Brother God intervenes and cuts loose the bands of wickedness. I'm not going to... Uh, the Bible says... Hold your finger there just a second. The Bible says when you fast, you're not supposed to brag about it and all that. And so I'm, I'm not going to do that tonight. By, by personal testimony, I practice what I'm preaching. I know it works. When I fast, and I fast on a regular basis. I won't go into detail tonight unless I feel the Lord would have me to tell you. But listen, brother, you don't, you don't stay under the load that I've been under for the last eight or nine, ten years without getting some help from God. Brother, I felt the pressure ever for the last several years to, to, to do without, to push it back. I've had people come up to me and say, Brother Danny, you're losing weight. But what's happening to you? And I'll tell you what, I feel like I need God's power on me more than I do my belly to be full. Amen? We need to loose the bands of wickedness. You know what I've noticed? I used to fight when I first started fasting a long time ago and I'd have to preach at night. The devil would say, you can't fast today because you've got to have be strong and have energy to preach tonight. And I'd go ahead and fast and I noticed if I preached five nights somewhere on the day that I fasted, the God's power would be on me stronger that night than any other night. You think, well, I'm weak, I'm dizzy, I'll pass out. That's not true. I'd get up and start preaching and I felt like I could bust my hand through the pulpit. It's amazing. It's amazing. It, look, it, your mind is so clear you can remember things. You know what food does to you? It makes you sluggish. It makes you uh, dull. You're not spiritually sharp. You can be deceived easy. Do you know what the sin of Sodom was? Pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness. Hey, wicked pride and a full stomach go hand in hand. You can't have one without having the other years. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's see what the next verse says. To undo the heavy burdens. You got a heavy burden for a lost person, heavy burden for a revival meeting, to let the oppressed go free. And that ye break every yoke. Now, back to our, our story, uh, uh, train of thought. 
that I was on a moment ago. You need to have the right motives. The Lord said, we need to appear not unto men to fast. When you fast, you don't tell everybody and say, I'm fasting today. You don't brag about it so people will look at you and think you're spiritual. That's wrong. He said, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance. I'll, I'll guarantee you, if you saw me on the day that I fasted, and you have lots of times, you would never know it. You would never know it. It said, anoint thine eye. Uh, uh, you're supposed to comb your hair, brush your teeth, spit it out, and just go right on and act like everything, nothing's going on. And my dear friends, you're supposed to do it for the glory of God so that God will know and nobody else. Matthew chapter 9. You said it's not for our generation. Matthew chapter 9. They asked the Lord about fasting one time. He said, how come your disciples ain't fasting? He said, because I'm with them. But the day will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. Then shall they fast in those days. I submit to you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, these are those days. The bridegroom's gone. He's not here. Then are the, this is those days that the Lord said you should fast in. You said, Brother Danny, I'm a, I'm a real Christian and i got my dispensation figured out and that's not for us in the age of grace. You're nuts too. Second Corinthians, Paul, in the age of grace, said, I'm in fastings often. Hey, Paul didn't fast once every six months. Paul didn't fast once a year. He said, in fastings often. You've got to fast regularly. And it's just like lifting weights. The more you do it, the easier it gets and the more you can go. First time you do it, you think you're going to die. But that flesh is lying to you. It's lying to you. Listen, brother, I remember days when I used to get up and go play ball down at Nebo School. My daddy had dropped me off at seven, near 7 o'clock down there at the store. Me and them boys would play ball all day long, drink nothing but water. Might drink a Pepsi in the middle of the day and go all day long because I wanted to hang around there, that ball field down there and play ball at that gym. And I got to thinking about that. I thought if I can do without that for a sport, if you can do without that for a hunting trip, you can push that plate back for the glory of God that God's power may come on you and on your family and on your friends. Instead of fasting and praying, we're feasting and playing. We're foodaholics. Every excuse Christians get nowadays, let's get together and eat. Let's get together and eat. Let's get together and eat. And I love it. I love it. I tell you, brother, I love it. Listen, you got cherry yum yum tonight. You say, Brother Danny, come over to the house. I'll say, I'll be there after a while. If I leave it sitting out on the steps here in the bed, I'll get it and take it home with me. Brother, I love fellowship. But there is some things more important like God. Listen, there's going to be teenagers here at that youth rally. There's people walking here every Sunday morning who have un who are in sin whose lives are a total wreck and only one thing is the answer is the all time Holy Ghost power of God coming down on them and the only way He's going to come is if people pray and fast that's why we're going to pray up here Friday night after we get back from the revival down in Hidden Night and that's why we're going to fast this week and, and if the Lord uh, ever, ever the Lord leads you you will I hope and pray it's in Ecclesiastes 10 17 write it down Ecclesiastes 10 17 said them people was drunk on food boy I'd preach on getting drunk on alcohol you'd shout the house down I'd preach on drunken on fornication you'd say glory to God preach it brother amen hey those people was drunk on food our God's our belly in this generation what's the benefits the benefits of fasting loose the wickedness undo heavy burdens let the oppressed go free break the yoke your mind gets clear we're spiritually lazy we're sluggish you know what I found out when I fast and really get in touch with God, I can get more done in 30 minutes than I can drag it around all day when my heart sluggish toward the Lord. You wouldn't believe the stuff that goes into a youth letter. Well, right now tonight, we're going to work on commercials for the radio. I've got uh, three or four pages of stuff got to be done. They're decorating for the bookstore. The girls are running the book table. They're going to be having a sale over there. We're doing a lot of things here. We're planning the special activities. I was on the phone just tons and tons of stuff. You say, well, Brother Danny, how do you get all that done? I'll tell you how. I can do without food. I can get down and I'll pray and my mind just starts clicking just like that. I can't get the answer no other way except that way. Listen, in Judges chapter 20, they prayed and nothing happened. They prayed and wept and nothing happened. 
Then they fasted and God heard and moved in their behalf. Let me tell you, sometimes you get down to the altar and you pray and you cry and you say, Oh God, please do this. Oh God, please do that. Oh God. And you get up and you think, Boy, I'm spiritual. I cried at the altar. But a lot of times that don't do the job. But when they fasted in Judges 20, God heard. Ain't you tired of nothing happening? Ain't you tired of teaching that Sunday school class or preaching and no, no conviction and no tears and no nothing? Hey, don't you get sick of that sometimes? Of not having the power of God in your life? I'm telling you, this is the answer tonight. In 1 Kings 21, Ahab fasted when he was going to be killed and God said, I won't do it in his time but I'll do it in his son's time. Did you hear me? God postponed the judgment to the next generation because one man, a heathen man even, prayed and fasted to God Almighty. The reason you fast, 1 Samuel 7, 6, his repentance from sin. One day, absolute fast, and they did it in 1 Samuel 6, 7, 6. Judges 20, write it down, Judges 20 and 26. Weeping didn't work, praying didn't work. Fasting did. Write it down. 1 Samuel 20 and verse 34. Jonathan fasted for the ill treatment of a friend. David was being ill treated and Saul was going to kill his buddy. And Jonathan got down and fasted. And God intervened and saved David. You might pray and fast for a friend. Yes, and you kids, it wouldn't hurt you school kids to learn how to fast for your friends at school. They're going to burn in hell one of these days if they're not saved. Learn how to fast for them that God will intervene on their behalf. Listen, they fasted one day there in 1 Samuel 1, 12. Joab killed, uh, was killed Abner. David fasted and one day God intervened. Second Chronicles 20 and verse 3. Jehoshaphat fasted because of fear. Are you bothered with fear? Torment? Are you scared? Worried? That's the thing to do. Fast. Here in the Word of God, they proclaim the fast. The leaders in the Bible proclaim a fast. I've had people ask me, they say, preacher, get up and say, all right, how many of you will fast this week? People raise hand. People say, that's not right, is it? Not supposed to. No, it is absolutely right. It's okay to proclaim a fast. You're not being as the hypocrites are when a leader proclaims the fast. You don't order a fast. You don't command the fast. I, but I proclaim a fast, or a pastor proclaims a fast. Listen, I heard about a church in a different state. They, they told me, he said, preacher said, our Sunday morning services were cold and dead, like most churches. And you'll notice here, Sunday morning's the hardest time. I don't know if you can tell it, but Sunday morning's the hardest time I have preaching. He said, he said, uh, you know what, me and deacons got together. I preached on it. He said, we start fasting on Saturdays. He said, we don't eat anything all day on Saturday. Come to church Sunday morning. Don't eat anything. And then eat after church on Sunday. He said, it's revolutionized our Sunday morning services. The power of God's there. God moves. People are touched. Boy, it got a hold of me. And I use, my day of the week usually fasting is not Saturday. And I did this, I did this yesterday. And I got up this morning. That heavenly dove, brother, just settling down in here. You've seen the tears. You've seen the people. You say, what is it? I don't know what it is. But I know one thing. When you get sincere with God, God will move. Acts 13 and verse 2 and 3, you know what they done? They fasted and prayed before they laid hands on somebody. We plan a big dinner and celebrate when we ordain a preacher. They fasted and prayed. Acts chapter number 14, verse 23, they ordained a preacher and fasted. Joel 2, 11 to 15, you write it down, God had mercy because people fasted. Jonah 3, verse 5 to 10, God changed His mind because people fasted. Amen? You know what Jonah did? Jonah went down there and preached. And the people of Nineveh got right, and the king got up and proclaimed a fast. He said, nobody eat. Women, children, don't let the animals eat. Don't feed the dogs. Don't feed the cows. Don't feed the horses. And they all laid down in sackcloth and ashes. And God Almighty changed His mind and didn't destroy that city because them people fasted. I believe there's enough Christians in America for God to spare America if Christians would get on their knees. I believe there's enough Christians right here in this church for God to move in MacDowell County if we get on our knees and want it better. You know what our problem is? We don't want it. 
We're happy with things like they are. I'm telling you, if you take God's blessings for granted, we ain't going to be here one of these days. We ain't going to be here. Here. Still got your hand there in Isaiah 58. I meant to tell you to keep that verse. We're going back to that verse several times. Isaiah 58, 8. When you have a real fast, here's what happens. When you really fast, here's what happens. Verse 8. Then, see, that's the first word. Then, when you really fast, shall thy light break forth as the morning. Amen? You want some light? You're having darkness? You can't get understanding of the Word of God? You, your head's fuzzy? You don't know if you're saved or not? Fast. Then shall the light break forth on you. You know what fasting does? It's like clears clouds back in the sun. Pops right through down on you. Gets clear as a bell spiritually. Oh, look at that second part. My soul, your health shall spring forth speedily. Is that in your Bible? Isn't that amazing? According to that verse, if you're fast, your health will be better. You say, the doctors say that you're supposed to eat three good meals a day. They don't know what they're talking about. In the Bible, they ate two meals a day and fasted a lot of times. There ain't nobody in here needs three big meals a day. Nobody. Boy, that was the puniest amen I've ever heard in my life. It ain't going to kill you. That's why you can't fast. Listen, your stomach stays full all the time. You're just like a man driving his car down the road, and when he don't get to three quarters of the tank, he stops and fills it up again. And it gets down just a little bit and he stops and fills up. Gets down a little bit and he stops and fills up. There ain't but two animals that has their, or one of them ain't an animal. There ain't but two things that has a full stomach all the time. That's hogs and people. Every other animal goes around with an empty stomach sometimes. Hogs and people. And they're both unclean. Amen? You want a message from God, preachers? Fast! God will give you a message. I'll never forget, I went up in the woods one day when I first started preaching. I'm 19 years old. And I went up in the woods and I said, God, I'm, I don't want to just stand up and give a little devotion. God, if this thing's really real, you really call me, God, I want you to speak through me. I stayed up there all day, prayed and fasted. You've heard me tell it before. They went and got some Kentucky Fried Chicken or something like that that day, and I said, no, I'm not going to eat it all day. I want God. Late that afternoon, son, it was just like somebody put a typewriter in my head. I faster than I could write it down. The Lord's giving me thoughts. Then shall I health spring forth. I know of a preacher who had terrible ear infections. He said ever since he was a little kid, he had ear infections. And he said these ear infections, they'd bother him and bother him. And every once in a while his ear would get infected real bad. And he said these ear infections would bother him to the point where he just couldn't hardly stand it. And he said, he said, there was nothing that would help his ear infection but an antibiotic. Every time he got an ear infection, he'd go to the doctor, they'd give him an antibiotic, and he'd take it and they'd clear it up. Nothing else would help. A lot of pain in his ear. He said one day the Lord laid it on his heart to fast. He had an ear infection, and he always used that as an excuse. I can't fast because I have this, and I can't. And you're supposed to see it always says, take with food. I've got all of that medicine before it said, take with food. I just take it with a glass of water. It won't kill you. Believe me. I tried. I've done it yesterday. My head was killing me, man. I said, take with food. Take with water. I don't care what they say. Drink enough water, it ain't going to hurt you. Drink you a hot glass of water. Put it up real hot and get it just as hot as you can drink it and just turn it up and drink it down. You know what? It's just like a radiator. It flushes you out, man. You know what's wrong with some of you folks? Your intestines ain't been empty since you was a baby. And it just clogged up in there, man. And your belly and your kidney, let it get empty once in a while. I'm talking about for health purposes. You know what he said? He said, God said fast. Don't take him pills fast. And he didn't take his medicine. And 48 hours, his ear infection was gone, completely clear. And you know what a medical doctor says? Medical doctors say that, you, that when you fast and you don't have no food in here, then your blood leaves your stomach and leaves your intestines and leaves your bladder and leaves your liver and it goes to wherever it is that messed up place on you and heals it. Yeah. Ain't that right? Yeah. Is that right or not? Right. Amen? The blood concentrates on that part of you that's messed up and it'll heal it, brother. A lot of the things that's wrong with people could be healed by theirself if they do without food once in a while. Yeah. Proof? You can't make a dog that's sick eat. A sick dog won't eat. A sick horse won't eat. 
You know why? That's nature's way that God put in us to heal our bodies. Now, if I got something wrong with my shoulder here, which I do, I heard it playing ball. That's what gives, my, gives me my headache. I heard it playing ball in high school, and ever since then it gets infected and makes it come over there, and I have to take antibiotics or, or whatever them other things are. Uh, inf uh, inflammatory. Something about makes it not be inflamed. And, and, it, it, and it's supposed to, do you know what? According to that, if all the blood in my body goes to that one place, it'll heal it up. But you know what? Our blood can't go to our toe. Our blood can't go to our finger. We keep it busy 24 hours a day right here. Chomp it up, chomp it up, chomp it up, throw it around. Chomp it up, chomp it up, chomp it up, throw it out. Chomp it up, chomp it up, throw it out. Here comes some more. <laughs> chomp it up, chomp it up, throw it out. Chomp it up, chomp it up, throw it out. Oh, he got me again. Here comes a big piece of pie. Oh, oh, chomp it up, chomp it up. Hey, the toes are dying. The foots are dying. The necks are hurting. But the blood can't go heal. What's wrong with it? Because all it does is chomp up food all the time. Bible says, then shall thy help, then shall thy help spring forth speedily. You can't make a sick dog eat. You know what J. Harold Smith said? J. Harold Smith fasted 21 days, I think a couple of times 40 days. I know a preacher who fasted 40 days. Water, just water. And J. Harold Smith, he was up 60 years old. And he said, the time that fast was over, he didn't have one blemish on his skin. His skin was like a Ten-year-old kid, no spots, and his tongue was just as pink as a baby's. Poison coming out of you. And if you fast long enough, you turn it just looks like a little baby. Clears up your eyes, does everything. Then shall the help spring forth speedily. Not many amens, but it's the truth anyway. First Samuel 30 and verse 11, 12. The Egyptian slave, David, finds him. He was sick. They left him there three days. In three days, that fellow was better. And I mean, he didn't have a cold, man. He's about dead. Three days, the Bible said his spirit revived. What happens when people fast? April 26, 1877, the governor of Minnesota proclaimed the fast. You hear me? The governor of the state. Locusts were taking over the country. They were eating up all the crops. It was an emergency. Back then, people believed in God. The governor got up. He read his Bible. He said, everybody fast. Pray that God will intervene. That very night, a big heavy frost come and killed all the locusts and killed all the eggs and they were gone the next day. Martin Luther fasted. You know what he said? The flesh was wont to grumble dreadfully. Amen. It'll do it. I'll promise you that. It'll do it. I've never been a great faster, but I, I have fasted regularly for about the last well, uh, six years, something like that. And I'm telling you what, brother, the flesh will grumble dreadfully. And it's just when you fast, food looks better to you then than any other time. You notice you can get up in the morning and not eat nothing at 10, 11 o'clock on a normal day and it don't bother you. But as soon as you say, I'm going to fast, by 9 o'clock, you're starving to death. That's just your mind playing tricks on you. When you ain't, can't get it, you want it worse. Jonathan Edwards, David Brainerd, Charles Finney, John Knox, all of them fasted. Tertullian in 210 A.D. said, he said, fasting is a better aid to religion than feasting. Polycarp, who was burned at the stake, 110 A.D., said fasting was a powerful aid against temptation and fleshly lust. You trying to get rid of fleshly lust? I'll tell you what to do. Fast a little bit. Starve that flesh. That lust will disappear. Benjamin Franklin said, I saw few die of hunger, but of eating, 100,000. John Wesley said, Christians who take heed to their ways and desire to walk with God will find frequent occasions of, of, of privation and in privacy to seek the Lord and single their mind on Him and get their heart fixed on God. To expend our sorrow and shame, purifying grace, add seriousness to our Christian life. 
avert the wrath of God, claim His promises, and a way to wait for His mercy. Deeper confidence when we're ready to sacrifice. Matthew Henry said, he laments that we're so, we fast so little in the Christian life. He said, well, Brother Danny, I've got a disease and I can't... Uh, he said, I'm old, Brother Danny. Listen, there's a woman in Luke chapter 2 named Anna who's 84 years old and served God with prayers and fasting night and day. 84. 84. The slothful man saith, there's a lion in the streets. See? You imagine, oh, I can't because of this. Oh, I can't because it's not good for me. It'd be the best thing in the world for you. I'm talking physically. I'm talking spiritually. I know most of you are saying, well, I appreciate what you're saying, and that is an interesting subject, but forget it if you think I'm really... No, 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 no. Deuteronomy 8.3 it's hard. Do you know what Deuteronomy 8, 3, 11, 14 teaches you? That you can't read your Bible and pray right on a full stomach. Have you ever heard a preacher say he didn't like to eat before he preached? Everybody's heard that, right? It just messes you up. Proverbs 3, 8, and 9 said, Give me food that's convenient for me. Brother, I tell you what, we, listen, if we brought people from other country, Brother Ricky can tell you, anybody that's been to any, in Germany, anywhere over there can tell you, they don't have buffets like we have here. They don't have all. Them people come over here and say, oh, you can eat buffet. Brother Chancey brought that fella from Ireland over here. Poor fella like to eat himself to death. <laughs> he said, you mean we can go back and get more? And I, I mean, I'm like, when you go to one of these buffets, there's something in me that I just cram it down like this so I can go get it before somebody else gets up there and gets it. <laughs> man, that's food worshiping, man. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous how we worship food. In our generation. Men still dig their graves with a knife and a fork. Amen. I tell you what you do. You fast. Next time the Lord lays it on your heart, you say, how do you know when you're supposed to fast? You'll know it. You'll know it. There's sometimes I know the Lord wants me to. There's other times I, you know, if you don't want to eat, I just go ahead and eat and it don't bother. But there's other times when, but the night before. Now what I do what I do, where it's here. now you can do how you think God leads you. The Bible, when it says a day fast, it's not, it don't exactly say what time they broke that fast. But what I do, like if I'm going to fast tomorrow, I eat two uh, them twisted up things that look like donuts this evening about 4.30. And if I was going to fast tomorrow, I don't eat nothing from now till Tuesday morning. That's all day tomorrow and all night. Now, some people say, well, yeah, I believe it just means 24 hours. Well, maybe it does. I don't know, but that's just the way I do it. I have done it lots of times where I just went 24 hours, but still, it seems like that's cheating because you are eating that day. Right? So, I mean, sometimes they did it in the Bible. They fought a big va a battle, and they went all day long, and when the battle's over, they eat that evening. I don't know. So, I'm not, I'm not it, it's not really clear on that. You do how you feel like God leads you. But that, I'm just telling you that's the way that I do it. And you make a list of all the blessings that God gives you. Jesus said, I have meat to eat you know not of one time when he was trying to get him to eat. He said, I've got something to eat you guys don't even know what, you, what it is. You know what he said? As it was in the days of Noah. What was the days of Noah? Eating and drinking. Eating and drinking. Build the old places. Isaiah 58, let's go back there again before we close. Some of you need to learn how to fast. I'm telling you, I'm not trying to be mean. Really, I'm not. I mean, I have a problem with it too. I have a problem with it too. But I tell you what, you ask any preacher that goes, listen now, I'm not trying to be ugly. You ask any preacher that goes and visits rest homes, there ain't no old, heavy people. They ain't none. I'm talking 80, 85, 90. They ain't none. You say, why not? They died 15 years ago. It's a proven fact. They can even change your medical insurance, health insurance prices. If you eat too much. And I know some, some of it's inherited. Some of it, some people can eat just a little bit and not gain an ounce or, or gain a whole lot of weight and other people 
can eat all day long and never get enough. So I'm not, your size has nothing to do with it is what I'm saying. Nothing at all. You may eat less than me and be twice bigger than me. You may just be because your daddy was that or your mother was that. So a lot of times we judge people and say, boy, they eat all the time and they may eat less than some of these little skinny guys. Man, these guys here, they can eat 24 hours a day. But I'm tell I keep telling them their day's coming. You know, when you're 17, 18, 19, you can shovel it in. Boys, when you hit 25, buddy, you can look at it and you feel something going, boom. You can smell it and you feel something going, just you get bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's when you've got to control it. You've got to control it or it'll control you. You say, Brother Danny, everything's going along pretty good. Hey, I know some people in here that needs to fast. Listen, listen, I, I see things. I know the problems we got here in our church. I ain't stupid. I know that some of you don't have the victory. I know there's some of you that has been years since God really moved on you. It's been ages since some of you have been on this altar. I know some of you haven't had a prayer answer in a coon's age. I know some of you don't know what it has been a long time since you felt the power of God on your life. I know that some of you need God's blessings on you. I know, listen, I know that some of you need to enter, God to intervene on behalf of your kids. You should fast for your kids. You should fast for your kids. You should fast for your kids. And by the way, I think it's about time some of you parents in here this evening started setting down some guidelines and rules for your kids to go by and just not let them do anything, go anywhere with anybody, act any way. You need God to help you. Listen, brother, listen. If your kids are out at the movie theater on the weekend watching anything that comes on, mama and daddy needs to get some help from God. You can't let your kids fill their mind with that filth of Hollywood every day and expect them to do right. You say, well, brother Danny, I did it when I was a teenager. Yeah, I did too, and it like sent me to hell. Listen, listen. And, uh, by the way, it makes a difference how they dress too. I ain't preaching on this. But listen, we need to, you parents have no business in the world letting your girls go out in shorts up to here where people can see their thighs. Are you out of your mind? Are you crazy? If you knew how boys talked about your daughters, you would, not, you would never let them dress like that. You'd say, well... Preacher, they're just little kids. Not in those wicked perverts out there. eyes, they ain't no little kids. And I say this because I love them. And I don't want people to think they're a little prostitute. I don't want them to think they're a Christian girl. Hey, by the way, the reason a lot of mums and daddies can't say nothing to their kids about what they watch because they watch every ungodly thing that's on TV. You need to turn that TV off and just get what's on there that would be decent and right and turn the rest of that garbage off and don't let your kids watch it. God ain't going to move. God ain't going to bless as long as we tolerate sin in our lives and in our hearts. That's why I, that's why I told the girls in the choir, I said, girls, get your dress on down there where you don't want to look like some hussy in a nightclub. You want to look like a Christian girl. Amen. He say, "We'll run you off." Well, I know lots of churches that ain't got a preacher. We're still right, anyhow. And if a shoe fits, what? I'm not trying to be mean. I love you. I love you. I wouldn't say this. If I didn't love you, I'd just say, all right, everybody, everything's wonderful. Let's just, let's just keep, you know, pay me more, you know, all that bull. Isaiah 58 said, let's go back to it one more time before we close. Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58. All these things that I mentioned is going to have to come by fasting. I'm not a... I don't think I'm overboard. I'm not a legalist. I'm, I'm, I'm a, really, I'm nice compared to a lot of preachers, really. But I do this. That there's a common line of decency that all Christians ought to observe. Would you agree with that? Brother, these things going in Christians' mind, heart, from that TV and that VCR in our day, that is not right. And you know it's not right. And the power of God won't be on you until you do something about it. Isaiah 58, read this one more verse and I'll be through. 
Oh, my goodness. I'm going to have to read more than that. I'm sorry. Look at verse number 9. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Want God to bless you? Then shalt thou cry, and he'll say, Here am I. Oh, my. Verse 11. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones. Thou shalt be like a watered garden. My. And they that shall be of thee shall be, build the old waste places to raise the foundations of many generations. And here it is, verse 12. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. Boy, that's what I'd like to be called, a repairer of the breach. It's like the dam busted loose, and I helped build it back. Hallelujah. The restorer of paths to dwell in. Thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day. Call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable. And thou shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Folks, there is a generation right in front of us getting ready to go to hell. Somebody's going to have to get in touch with the Lord. Somebody's going to have to push the plate back, pay a price. Do you say, well, Brother Danny, I'd like to just go and get a good night's sleep and pig out all week and enjoy the youth rally. What about them lost kids? What about them? Couldn't we give up a little bit so that others may have what we got? I don't really know how to give an imitation. I guess I'd like to proclaim a fast. And I'm talking to everybody, everybody. I'm not going to tell you how long or when, but at least, at least, if God nudges your heart one day this week and one day the following week, if you've never done it before, maybe you should just not eat breakfast, dinner, and something. Maybe eat that evening, or maybe just go 24 hours from supper to supper. It'll help you. It'll help you, I promise you. God looks down. If God looked down and he saw several hundred people in McDowell County doing without, and every time a hunger pain hits you, every time one of them little things that's like stick in your stomach, that reminds you to pray, oh God. Bless the church, Lord. Please, God, bless the church. And then when it gets real bad, just get you a glass of water when your mouth gets dry. And God looked down and he's seen that many people. Listen, he spared Nineveh. Amen. He spared Nineveh because people hit their knees. And God when hear our prayers. I'd love to see the Lord just tear this town apart. And he can do it. Maybe you need to get serious about your Christian life. What I said a minute ago about kids, and I know, I got girls, brother. I got a teenager and two little ones. I'm going to set them all three down before, when, I, when it gets summertime. And they say, all right, here's the line. You can't wear nothing that goes here. You can't wear this. And I'm going to set my line the way I feel like God laid it down in the Bible. You say, what if they get mad? They'll just have to get mad. Amen. But they will get over it. And a little later on, they'll hug your neck and thank you for caring enough about them. That's right. That's right. Oh, I don't believe in all this. Oh, yeah, 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 we know. And we see how the power of God left your life too. Amen. There's a certain amount of dedication and holiness that God demands from a Christian. It ain't going to kill us. If we want to get serious tonight, does our church really want to be serious? It's easy for a church like ours to just sit back and say, ah, we got the, well, I don't know, we may have the biggest church in Western North Carolina now. As far as I know, I don't know that. I don't know of a one that has more in Sunday school in the entire Western North Carolina than ours. Any denomination. 
I don't know that for sure. It'd be easy just to sit back and say, well, glory to God. The blessings are falling. But the bigger it gets, the more responsibility we have, the more we got to fast and pray to keep it. I feel the pressure now to fast like I didn't feel it 10 years ago. I used to hardly ever fast. But buddy, in the last six years, I've had to. I've had to. Spiritual emergencies come sometimes. Let's just bow our heads for prayer. If you want to come to the altar tonight, you come on. You need to settle things from God, with God. Daddy, how about it, daddies? You the man of the house. You set the stage. Mamas, are you willing to follow daddy? If you're not, get right with God. Ask God to help you. Have mercy on you.